Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Molnar. I'm the founder of Blossom Empowering Events. And today I will be talking to Enara Parra from Roots and Cook. Hello, Enara. Good day. How are you? Hi. Hi, I'm good. I'm good. And you? Yes, I'm very excited to talk to you because we know each other from um, the WBII Instagram group. We, uh, we are behind the scenes uh, taking care of the Instagram of this, uh, this group of ladies who are doing business, founded in The Hague, but uh, with an international uh, background. And today we will be discussing what uh, brought you to business how you started your own business, um, what made you cook for us and uh, how you built your following and uh, yeah, many more questions. So I'm looking very much forward to talking to you. So uh, yes, let's start at the beginning. How, how come you started uh, Roots and Cook? So I started my business, uh, which is called the Roots and Cook, uh, two years and a half ago. And uh, I was working for a corporate, but I, I don't know. I always wanted to do something else. And I always had that idea uh, of doing something with my other passion, besides like coordinating projects. My other passion is also like cooking. Um, and I always had a, an idea of I wanted to do something with it. Um, so yeah, two years ago, it was like, okay, now is the moment. Uh, so I decided to start working on, uh, and to um, create roots and cook which is like a website where I um, have like all kind of different recipes to inspire people uh, to cook, but I also um, create content uh, for different brands and different uh, companies where they need like maybe food related content creation. And I develop like different recipes for them. Lovely. And also what really uh, is special about Roots and Cook is that it's bilingual. That's something that interests me because I love languages. So uh, how does that work to, to uh, create content in two languages, to have an audience that is maybe, uh, yeah, from different parts of the world? How, how is your experience? About yeah, so because I'm based in, uh, in The Hague, so of course everything had to be in English. And, uh, but then of course, because I'm coming from, the, from Spain, uh, I wanted also my family to be able to follow the recipes and also my friends and also because gastronomy is so big in Spain. I also wanted to have recipes for the um, uh, Spanish speaking uh, people. So I decided to have uh, to have my website in both, the, in both the languages. It is a lot of work, a lot of work because everything needs to be done twice. Even the newsletter, everything, I need to do it twice. Everything is double. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I really like it. And I think it's like, is for me like the way to go because then I can really have, like I have people from all kinds of different places, like people from Australia or uh, yeah, America, like following your recipes. But then I also have lots of people from uh, like Spanish speaking uh, people following like the recipes, which is, uh, it is actually really nice because uh, you can really reach a lot of people. Yes. And, the, and also in their own language or at least in the, the Spanish community. That exactly. Also very large in the world exactly uh yes it's not just spain but also overseas indeed lovely but um yeah and then more specifically how do you do that then because your instagram posts are are two languages in one post right and the newsletter do you send out two separate newsletters yeah or? exactly exactly you can sign to the newsletter if you want to get a the newsletter itself in english or you can do it in spanish and then i have like two different uh, list like two separate lists but oh. then I will send a newsletter if you sign up for the one in Spanish you, you will get in Spanish and if not you will get it out in English and then the website is also like double everything is double wow yes that's really clever because then it, it speaks to the people uh, instead of that they have to scroll down or scroll up or exactly yes, exactly 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 it's a, it is a little bit crazy sometimes on social media when I'm doing stories is when you're speaking then it's like i need to pick one <laughs> so i try to do half and a half when i'm like yes. really talking mm -hmm. i try to do half and a half half sometimes i do spanish sometimes i do english but then everything is with the subtitles so everything has both all the time uh, yeah even the subtitles yeah 
Yes. Well, I'm happy you do it. I'm sure your audience also appreciates it that you make this effort because I know that one of the standard advices in the world is to just do one language, even if you speak many, because that's easier. But on the other hand, when people get the information in their own language, it speaks to them directly and it has bigger effects. So if you can, can do this effort, then it's wonderful. Exactly. Uh, yes. Because, um, for example, I, I chose to do everything in English because, because that's really simpler. And, and I do so many other things as well. So, uh, yeah, in my case, it would be a nightmare to do all, all the other languages as well. So I prefer to do it only in English. But I admire you for doing it. Yeah, I, I thought how about, much work it is. Yes. Yeah, I thought a lot about it just to stick to one, but then I cannot really decide which one because I would be really damn missing either like Spanish speaking audience and then that would be family as well, which is really pity. Mm. And then to just do it in Spanish doesn't make any sense because it's like for me, work and everything is really English always. And then also if I if I'm working with brands and working with clients, that would be in English as well. Mm -hmm. So then it's like Yes, it is difficult. <laughs> it's difficult, but sometimes it's also yes. You can choose that you don't have to choose. That's yeah. your choice. That you exactly. say, okay, you know what? I want both. And exactly, uh, yeah. As far as I can do it, because it does take a lot, of, lots of time to redo really the subtitles all, all the time. But uh, as far as I can do it, it will be fine. Yeah, lovely. Yes, great. And um, so you started two and a half years ago, and how do you see it evolving? What, what's, what's different now than it was in the beginning? Um, I think it is different uh, because, of course, I mean, when you start, you have, like, you have lots of fears. <laughs> like, where is this going? And you need to like build everything, like step by step on everything. And, I think like my fear at the beginning was like to redefine my voice because when you start sharing like recipes and you start like creating like community of people that they they follow you and then you start like connecting with brands when they start collaborating with you and everything you start like creating like content for them and everything it's like to really stand out uh from hundreds of different uh food uh, content creators and food blogs mm -hmm. uh that was that was difficult that was a little bit like like to find your niche and to find your voice that was a little bit uh difficult at the beginning because you start maybe comparing yourself with others and you start maybe doing what others are doing and it's like no you don't need to do that just to do whatever you like just be yourself and then people will start like connecting with you because you are unique and we all are unique because there is no one else like you and then that is your voice and maybe that was maybe uh my fear at the beginning and i think i found that i found my voice and i found like my style and my space and my my uh audience and uh i think uh, that's where i am now yes that's lovely that's so true because uh, uh finding your niche can be very challenging but i also agree if you uh look for your niche from the inside out so uh, from who you are and what you have to offer and what you would like to do, then it's easier because then you attract people in a natural way. And then you see who these people are who are interested in what you have to offer. And then you can, uh, yeah, get specific there. So that's, exactly. uh, that's really true because finding your niche is, is one of those, uh, oh no. <laughs> How am I going to find my niche and I have to niche down and it's always a challenge to exactly 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 and also this fear of excluding people uh yeah but there it's also it's it's not so much about excluding because you have to be specific about your target and then other Indeed. people are welcome as well Indeed, and trying to sort of please everyone, or because uh, what I do is like I create like food related content. Mm -hmm. uh, there are always like those viral videos of like easy recipes and things like that. And then that could be like easy way of like building maybe com a community, just mm -hmm. doing like something that you know will go, it will go viral and lots of people will see it and everything. But that's not what I want. That is not my target audience, which is like 
uh, sees like a, a, a video of food and they will never cook it and they will never understand like uh, the uh, combination of the, of the flavors and the end result and everything. That is really not my target. I want people to really like enjoy every single part of the um, of uh, like the cooking process, like to go to the market to smell the apples because when, because it's apple season now and to buy, to buy apples and to go back home and to really like enjoy cooking and have that like slow cooking process and everything. And that is what I want. And sometimes it is like difficult. Uh, or I mean, not now, but at the beginning, it was like, oh, wow, if I do like these viral videos, like everyone is going to see it and then I'm going to grow really quick. That's not what I want. I want quality, like small, but quality rather than quantity. Mm-hmm. That is also like a, you need to make those decisions as well. Oh, yes. Yes. Quality. I, I also see a lot of quantity around me and it's it's even, I would call it garbage, really. Yeah because uh, it's polluting uh, it's polluting the the media just with these shout outs uh, that have not much to say just no i don't think it's healthy for like it's really not healthy i think no no and talking about the the food process and the and the recipes how how do you come up with uh, recipes um, how does that work so i get like inspiration maybe let's go like that like it could be from anywhere I always check like what kind of because what I do is like I'm always sure like what kind of things are in season to inspire people to really go to the market and pick like now it's like apple and pear season to go to the market and to try to get those uh those fruits or vegetables so if I go to the market and if I see something special I will get it and then I will start thinking about what can I do what can I cook with it or it happens a lot as well when I'm on vacation or I go just to a restaurant and I try something new and then it's like, like the flavor is like really nice, the combination, but maybe they added something that I don't like, but I, I don't know, it's like, I can really like, I get inspired maybe with the flavor, with the colors and things like that. And then I have that idea in mind. And then when I come back home, I start like building something from there. I get inspiration of this combination, but then it's not really like roots and cookie style. So I always, translate that into my own style I think what everyone does basically we have our own style uh, uh, cooking at home and that is uh, I think that that is how I start building I get inspiration from maybe a cookbook or recipe or maybe specific ingredients as well I try to buy like maybe a new ingredient uh, every week every other week and then just try something new with it and then she's like testing and testing and testing. What I do is like, uh, and my audience uh, loves it, is that every Friday is testing Friday. Uh, so on Fridays, I'm, all, I'm always testing like new recipes. Sometimes they turn out really good and sometimes they are a disaster. <laughs> oh, but that's genuine. Yes, that's just how it, it works. It is true. Right? In, in I the mean, kitchen. sometimes it's just an idea that I think it might work, but I don't know if it's going to work or not. So I just... Uh, try it and test it on Fridays and sometimes it's really like a failure and then okay I'm, we'll never cook this again but sometimes it's like it's pretty good but it needs some improvement so then I'll, next week the week after maybe I will I will test it again until I have like the recipe and it's really funny because mo- most of those recipes are done like the the ones that create more traffic and they are like more popular on the website so it is I don't know people really really, really like that Yes, I can imagine because it's uh, there is a failure possibility. There is this excitement, or of is it going yeah. to fail, or is it going to be a success? Exactly, and, exactly. It's just an idea that I have, but then of course you need to try it. So, yes, it, it it's very triggering. Nice, yes. And and what is your style? Because you you just mentioned that uh, you have your own style. What? How would you describe this own style? Uh, I always cook like with uh, fresh local seasonal ingredients. So I always try to go to the market either here in The Hague or go to uh, different like there are different organizations here in The Hague where they offer, where they offer like uh, local seasonal products as well from like the farmers uh, nearby. And I think that is really nice. So I always try to get like what's, what is in season and then I will cook something with it. So I always try to stick with like local organic producers Mm-hmm. and uh, using like seasonal products uh, I try to keep it uh, pretty simple so most of my recipes are like uh, seasonal um, I don't really like to call it like healthy because I don't think there's like healthy and unhealthy food but uh, yeah it's like pretty like 
simple, um, healthy food, and then occasionally there will be some uh, traditional uh, desserts as well, because I mean, that is also healthy to have a good dessert every now and then. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you, you, you really make everything, it's it also the dessert. Some yeah. people say, oh, the dessert is something totally different. Uh, I'm not putting my hands on that. Yeah, I do. I, I mean, uh, it's like I would say like 85% of the recipes I create, they are like savory. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, every now and then I do like to bake something nice as well. Yeah, sounds good. Huh? Wow. Um, let me see what else I've I've had. A, a, prepared a few questions here let me see what else i would like to ask you um yes what uh do you think you, you have a feminine touch in your way of doing business i like to uh yes i would like to know that what do you feel about that Is that there... i do different because i'm a woman yes maybe there's something that you do differently Oof. That is a good one. <laughs> yes. Uh, it can be also in your advantage, of course. It's not something... Um... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's maybe... Uh, maybe, I would say maybe a little bit of uh, emotional intelligence, maybe, that I can really, that I really connect a lot. I mean, I don't have like a large audience, but I have really good quality audience. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I grow, I grow my audience like little by little, uh, so really connect with people and their stories. And uh, um, I don't know, it's like I have people that they send me photos of the markets when you go to a market because they know that I love it, and uh, and they are trying maybe something new because I inspired them to try something new with a new vegetable or something. Uh -huh. So it's like I think that connection that I have uh, with people, and because this is something that I truly love, the energy. Everyone says that I have like that energy that it's like when they come and maybe open uh, maybe social media or they open Instagram and they and they check my stories or my recipes and things like that. They are like, I don't know. It's like there is like a special energy behind it. Mm, yes. So yes. Connecting with your audience and, and yeah. your energy. Yes, I also feel your energy. You're always like a, one big sunshine full, full of positive energy, which is uh, wonderful, of course. Yes. And um, so you're, you're also talking about the quality of your audience. How, what's, what definition would you give the quality of your audience? What, what kind of audience is it? I think, uh, I think it's because what I, I do, what I do is like, I stick to my own voice and to my own style rather than following with it, which is like trendy. It would be so easy to just do like, viral or trendy videos of foods, mm -hmm. which most of them, they don't even have any sense because the combination of the ingredients, is just not good. I mean, I cannot handle that. It's just not good. So I just stick to, I mean, I even use like all kind of weird vegetables and ingredients like rutabaga. Most of the people, they don't even know what was that until I start like cooking with it or fennel, for example. Fennel is not like a vegetable that lots of people use it. So I, I use it and then I show people how to, uh, uh, create like an easy recipe and uh, and how to use it and everything so it's like I'm building more on the quality rather than making something that is like I know it's going to be popular and then lots of people is going to hear about it but then you're not building anything from like quality point of view at all you're not really connecting with people they are not maybe relating to uh to a story that you're sharing or to the idea of uh, that you went to the market and you tried these or you were talking to to someone on the market and they inspire you with a recipe or they told you to try this or that or you are testing something and it was a big failure as well and you're sharing that as well of course mm -hmm. and they really connect with you okay so it's about the connection yeah when you talk about quality you talk about the connection with your audience that's the key yes i like that too to uh to be more personal uh, because social media can be so unpersonal yeah, indeed. So uh, also when you create it, when you create a post, it can feel so distant because, because you 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 put in uh, all this effort to to create a nice post with a nice picture or video and and uh, yeah, any everything really you think about it and then there's this big 
silence and you just don't know whether people are going to react to it or not it can be very um give a feeling of loneliness and then yeah there is a connection that's really great it's uh it's really nice when people react to it and and do something with it and even sometimes it's later like weeks later or months later or years later that you get feedback on that particular thing that you did yeah that definitely remember it definitely definitely because all my recipes like i don't share my recipes on, on social media I, I have like a website for that so all my traffic goes to websites so my core business is like their website yeah. and uh and of course, it's like those recipes, you can always type like, I want to make ceviche. And then you are typing on Google ceviche and then you will end up on my website instead of like, it's like, it's like two different things. Social media is more like a marketing tool where you're sharing a little bit what you do and who you are and everything. Mm -hmm. But then like the core part and the essence of your business and the recipes and style and everything and the quality part is really on the, on the website. Mm -hmm. So people can go at any time and they can find inspiration of all kinds of different recipes yeah and and do you have maybe uh ideas or tips for other ladies who are starting their own business how they uh what, what they should or shouldn't do do you have any ideas i think it's like do it do it if, and do if it. you're asking yourself should i do it sure just do it and try it and i think for me it's always at least try it once that's what i always say to i mean why not then like I might have an idea that okay, I have this idea, but I don't know if it's going to work or not because I haven't seen anyone doing it. Okay, it doesn't matter. Maybe you can uh, keep it small and mm -hmm. not make a huge investment or anything, but at least try it once. Yes. Always try it once because you're going to learn so much from it. If, and if it doesn't work, I mean, if it doesn't work, you're going to learn even more than if it works, actually. <laughs> Yes, maybe things you didn't want to learn, but yes, you will definitely learn things. Yes. So always yeah. try it at least once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Very good uh, creed. Yeah, I like it. And um, what about your future? Are you, are you up to something? Are you, <laughs> are you creating something for us that uh, you would like to share something about? So I think... Uh um uh, for the next coming uh, months or years uh i started working i mean i don't know when that will be uh published or something but i really want to publish uh, like a self-published um cookbook yeah. i started working on that mm -hmm. uh, i still like really little and i don't really have a deadline or anything because uh still like working on it but I would really, really love that. And I have lots of people asking for it because they really like to have like the recipes online and everything. Even they can purchase now a like single recipe printed version of it, but they really want to have like a book. Book they can have in the kitchen with all the recipes and then they can cook with it. That That is one. And then the other one that will be maybe farther in the future, but to really uh, be able to have space, like a physical space where I can really uh, cook so I can give like cooking uh, workshops uh, to the people. I think that would be really lovely. Yes, I think so too. And people might want to travel for that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <It's I'll> <laughs> Your audience is everywhere in the world. Yeah, it is. But there is like lots in here mm -hmm. in the Netherlands. And I think there's, there's really lots of people that they really like uh, cooking. And uh, I don't know. I think there is also something changing in there that people are going back like taking more care of what they are like uh, the food they are bringing home and maybe sticking more to organic and there are lots of local uh farmers selling like uh food and local farmer markets initiatives uh i think there are like more and more uh popping everywhere so i think there is like a lot to do there nice yes and i can also hear a new theme coming up that you travel around the world trying local markets around the world i would love that i really love that to really have like a maybe a tv show no not a tv show but something or maybe a podcast or something that i can travel i can go to markets and then um, i can buy some uh, ingredients and then go and cook something yeah that would be amazing <laughs> love the idea yes. yes i'm very much looking forward to it 
Okay, Anada. Um, yeah, last question. Where, where can we find you? How can we contact you? So you can always find me on the website where, where you can find lots of recipes, so you might like them. <laughs> and that is uh, rootsandcook.com. Mm -hmm. But then you can also find me on Pinterest uh, with the name Roots and Cook on YouTube as well. There are some uh, uh, cooking videos. And then I think where I'm more active is on my Instagram account, where you can see a little bit more of behind the scenes of the all that uh, testing Fridays. And uh, I don't know, more like day-to-day -day, um, you know, stuff. Uh, and that would be also uh, Roots and Cook. It's called right. uh, the account, uh, the name of the account on uh, Instagram. Yeah, so you have a website, Pinterest, YouTube, yeah. and also Instagram. I'm sure I we'll be uh, following you on Fridays for the testing Fridays. And I, I really hope to, uh, to hear more from you with your cookbook, The Making Of, and also workshops that I'm sure it will be possible to find some place for you to to start doing these workshops. And I hope so too. I hope so too. <laughs> for that, that's uh, that we will be standing in line to uh, to um, to come and do your workshops. Lovely. Thank, Thank you, you so you, much, Anna. Really looking forward to uh, all these exciting uh, projects of yours. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yes, uh, ladies watching, thank you for your, uh, for your time, for having joined us today and looking forward to seeing you next time at one other interview with another female entrepreneur who is uh, telling her story for Blossom Empowering Events. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, Anara. -bye. Bye,